Hi, I'm Curtis Bowdy, and welcome to the Scope of Science. Today I'm going to talk about the most important thing to humanity. When 57,000 different individuals from 60 different countries were asked, it was happiness. That's what mattered most to them. Now, in America, most people are doing well. They're doing good. But what's crazy is that less than 20% of people are flourishing or are rad. Now, if happiness is what matters most to us, then how come we aren't doing better? Well, I think this comes down to how we actually look at happiness. We treat it as if it's not a scientific question, if it's something that we can just answer with anecdotal evidence. It's basically saying, oh, this one thing happened to me this one time and I felt this way after, therefore, whenever I do this one thing, I will feel this way. Uh, but that's not how we do science. When we do science, we try to gather a lot of data and actually do math, do statistics to figure out if there is actually a relationship between those two things. We can use data polls to figure out the pulse of an entire country, to actually look at how happy a country is. And the World Happiness Report has done that for us. And I, like a lot of Canadians, am pretty good. We score out about here. And that's not as good as Denmark, but better than America, better than Russia, and much better than places like Burundi. Now, I have been tracking my personal data, and in fact I have 448 entries for the last 550 days. I've been using an app called Dailyo, and it regularly prompts you, I've set it to once a day to prompt me, to ask, how are you? Are you rad? Are you good? Are you meh? Are you fugly? Or are you awful? And every day I just simply press that in and I'll type in a few words like what I did today, did I work today, did I bike today, did I see some friends today, did I have a drink today? I type that in and it tracks that data for me. Like a lot of tracking apps, it allows you to do cool things with that data. It can automatically generate monthly charts for you to show how your happiness is changing over time. Or if you're really into it, you can actually export that data and do your own stuff with it. Like say, make your own word clouds, which I think is really cool. Now, I'm not going to share any of my personal data on this video, that's a little too much for me right now, but I will go so far as to say that I'm doing good overall when I've averaged out all of this data. So if I see you on the streets and you ask me how I'm doing and I say I'm good, I'm most likely to be telling the truth. And not just saying that because that's what everybody says whenever you ask them how they're doing. Okay, so what are some of the lessons that I've learned while tracking my life data for all of this time? Well, firstly, it's just become really useful to have something that I can check back to. When did I have that lunch with that person? I can go through the journal part and figure that out. But much more importantly, I've been noticing that it has actually improved my happiness. I was starting to get suspicious about this a few months ago. I was thinking, well, if I'm paying more attention to my happiness every day, kind of checking in with how I feel, then I'm probably making adjustments as I go along. So I had this hypothesis and I decided to look into it. And sure enough, a meta-analysis of 51 different studies on happiness found that positive psychology interventions, which are basically things that check in and tell you, hey, uh, think about something good right now. Think about how happy you are. Well, those interventions actually increase your well-being. They found a significant impact in that way. Now, with complicated topics like happiness, it can be very hard, and in some cases almost impossible, to tease apart correlation and causation from one another. Does biking make you happier? Well, I can look at my data and see that on days I was biking, I was happier. So, does that mean that it actually made me happier? Well, it could also have meant that I was biking because it was my day off, and having days off makes me happier. It's really hard to tease that apart, but I think that actually gathering data and trying to answer those questions is the good place to start. I think it's actually the only place to start. Looking into the future, if more people start doing this, and in fact if millions of people start doing this, then instead of having small studies of a few dozen or maybe a few hundred people, well, instead of those small sample sizes, we could have millions of people collecting happiness data, and we could have a much better understanding of what makes people happy. I actually waited a long time before making this video because I was hesitant, because talking about happiness is taboo. Even though it's the most important thing to us, apparently, 
we still aren't comfortable about talking about it with others. Because talking about happiness means also talking about sadness, and that is just something we don't do. And I think that it's time that we actually start to try to change that stigma. So please, start a conversation about happiness in the comments below. Whether it's saying how you're doing today, or saying what you think about data tracking and happiness, and turning the happiness into a science, and if that you think that that is, doesn't go well with your heart, or whatever it is, please start a conversation about this. It's something we really need to start talking about. And as always, thanks so much for watching.